Thank you. That made me sound a little bit better than what I actually am. <laughs> but thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, it is always a privilege to be able to come in and, uh, and speak to you all. Um, it's so challenging when Pastor Ch John gives me an opportunity because, you know, I have about a billion things on my mind that I would like to talk about. It's like, how do I narrow it down? God, what do you actually want for this day? Um, and it's Mother's Day, so shouldn't it be about moms? Yeah, it's not going to be. So I just, just going to tell you right now, um, I'm also going to tell you right now that um, it might be a little bit heavy, okay? Um, those of you who do know me well, you know I have a very intense side, um, so you might see a little bit of that today. Give me some grace if I get too intense, all right? You can find me after and go, chill out, Maria. You don't need to be that intense, all right? Um, so as we, as we begin, um, you know how sometimes we, not sometimes, we have things that we call principles in our life, right? A truth that serves as a foundational system to influence our behaviors and our belief systems. Um, you might have a principle that's in your home that says, do not talk to mom until after she's had coffee, for example, okay? Um, have you ever heard of the five love languages? Right? Five, love, five love, love languages. This is a principle um, that, in short, says we receive love in five different ways, okay? By uh, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Kevin and I read this book. We went to a class on it, and uh, we began to try to figure out what are our love languages. Let's make sure that we can learn how to best love each other. No one took into consideration that that is not one of my top love languages. My top love language is chocolate. <laughs> this is what I'm getting for Mother's Day. <laughs> and it speaks to my heart. Uh, anyone who knows me knows I'll always have a chocolate bar in my bag. So if you ever need something, let me know. But these are the kinds of principles that we live by on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, in our walk with God, there are what I would call kingdom principles. Um, many of you have heard of them, okay? I'm gonna run through a couple real quickly. Love, have you heard of this kingdom principle? This is a God-ordained way of thinking in order to then influence our behaviors and our beliefs. Right? Even if you've never opened a Bible, you know God says, love each other. Love your enemy, love your spouse, love your children, love your friends, love one another. Okay? And in 1 John, he says, I'm going to give you, I'm going to kind of hop through a bunch of scripture today, just so you know. Anybody notes that are note takers, it'll be quick. Um, he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. There are many, many times in the Bible that God says to love. But as I was preparing this, God reminded me that there's more to it than just a command that he gives. It's more than just a principle that he provides us with. He actually is the model, the example of the principles that he gives us to live by. So when we look at the example of love, 1 John 4, 19, right before that other verse that I just shared with you, we love because he first loved us. God is the example of love. And because of that, we now can follow the principle of love. All right, next, forgiveness. Anyone ever heard, hey, I'm supposed to forgive people? Right? Okay, you're supposed to forgive people. Ephesians says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, in Christ forgave you. Again, Jesus is the model of forgiveness. You see, we have to follow what he has done because how can we practice a principle that we've never seen acted out before, okay? So by following God's example in that he forgave us first, we can then forgive others. He forgives moment by moment. 
He forgives day by day, he forgives year by year, and decade, decade by decade. And he tells us to do the same thing. In fact, how many times does he tell us to forgive? Anyone know? 70 times, seven times. And that's for each person, by the way. So <laughs> it's a lot of forgiveness that we go through in our lives. All right. Um, how about generosity? It's not up there, but that's okay. Generosity, giving, it's another principle. Um, we're asked to live lives of generosity, sacrificing our time, our treasure, our talent, giving them to other people. Well, God gave first, am I right? He gave Adam and Eve a beautiful garden that they didn't even have to work in. He gave provision over and over and over and over again. We see that so many times in the Bible and in our own lives. How about manna coming from heaven in a desert, for example? And then, of course, the best gift, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is the biggest example of the kingdom principles that we're to follow in our lives. He's not the kind of guy that says, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so God is then therefore the authority to provide the principles for us to follow. Now, when we speak about authority, is there anyone who's like, yes, I'm so excited. Maria's gonna talk about authority today, right? Why is she bringing that up? That's so not fun. Um, but we are gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it in a very interesting way. Um, if you are very sensitive, I would say that this would be the time that you would cover your ears um, because I am going to use the S word. And that S word is submission. Um, Haha, -ha, submission. A kingdom principle that has become a very, very bad word in our society. Um, it brings on the connotation of control, obedience, stripping of your individuality, diminishing of your input and your opinion. Can anybody agree with that? When you initially hear submission, you do not put a smile on your face. In fact, you get a little defensive and annoyed. Um, and I would submit to you um, <laughs> that submission um, is more, actually I should not say more, is not what you think it is. Um, my prayer is that we would redeem the concept of submission today. Um, it's, It's such a misunderstood word. It's such a misunderstood concept that as I give you a lot of stuff about it, my prayer is that you would be open to say, okay, God, what is it that you actually have for me today? Is this, does this have anything to do with me today? So let me pray for us and then I'm gonna keep, keep going. God, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you for the principles that you give us to live by. We thank you that you love us enough, that you don't just leave us here going through life on our own. And God, I pray right now that you would help to um, use me to communicate your kingdom principle of submission to your sons and daughters, and that we would understand why you've given us this idea and how there is a joy in living under it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so submission is not control, okay? Control is something that's taken. Submission is something that's given. It comes under an authority, but it's not meant to be authoritative. Do you hear the difference, right? There has to be an authority for submission. There does not have to be authoritative behavior in order to be an authority. So submission is, and this is the definition that we're gonna use for this. Uh, those of you who are taking the first Peter study, this comes from that. 
Uh, the voluntary surrender of your will to the role of another in attitude and action. All right, voluntary. Guess what? It's a choice. If you are forced to submit, that is not submission. That is control. Okay? Surrender. It is a giving. It is something you have to give up in order to actually be submissive. Of your will, this is your own personal desires, you're gonna give those up, to another. And this is really the key because who is the other? The other is going to be an authority in your life. It's about the position that they hold, not their character nor their actions. That's where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> and I also want to mention, I added in, this is about your attitude as well as your actions. If your attitude is not submissive, you are not submissive. Okay? So this typical view of submission, how can I submit if I don't respect them? <laughs> or I'll submit if I agree. The problem is submission doesn't take effect unless there's disagreement. Otherwise, you're not submitting. You're just walking along together. So it's, it's harder to submit in the world that we live in today than it is to rebel. Rebellion is easy. We're very self-centered, self-preserving people. <laughs> and if we don't agree with our authority, we want to be sure that our disapproval is known by all. I don't want anybody to think that I agreed when we had to let that employee go. I definitely don't want anybody to think that I approved when my husband decided to spend all of our savings on a 90-inch TV. He did not do that. It's an example. <laughs> or I don't want to be known as being a part of that ministry that was cut. We want to make sure that the people around us know that we were not in approval. It is a self self-preservation mindset where we're protecting ourselves from the way that other people are going to look at us, okay? What if we were willing to change this mindset? Thinking of it this way, submitting is not a signaling of an approval to those in authority. Instead, it's a sig signaling of humility and obedience to God. Should I say that again? It is not a signaling of approval to the person in authority. It's a signaling of humility and obedience to God. As you know, it takes faith to follow God. But without true humility and sacrificial obedience, you cannot submit to him nor to the delegated authorities that he puts in our life. Submission is his principle, and what we're going to talk about today are the different authorities that we are to submit to and why. Um, but before, okay, I just need to show you um, that just like the other principles that we talked about, Jesus is the model and the standard for submission. It's easy to think of Jesus as being the example of love, the example of forgiveness, the example of giving. But did you know that he is also the example of submission? And this is throughout the word uh, of God. I just grabbed one um, to show you. This is Jesus talking. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Even Jesus came under authority. And I hate to say this like this, but 
If Jesus himself was not too good to come under authority, who in the world do we think we are that we should not come under authority? So let's look at the different areas, okay? There is what we're gonna call direct authority and we're gonna call delegated authority. Um, first, we're gonna look at the delegated authorities, okay? So we've got our first one, civil authorities. Romans 13, one through two. Romans 13, one through two. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Who is that? Let a few people? Let the other people in the government? What did it say? Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. Let me read that part again. Whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So what does this verse mean? And there's many, many like this. It means to follow the laws of the land. Respect and honor those in authority over us, our mayor and uh, governor and the police officers and our president. These people are in governing authorities over us and, and we are told by God to submit to them. Even if we don't agree with one single thing that they stand for. Difficult to reconcile, no? You happen to live in a society where you actually have a voice. If this message was being spoken somewhere else, it would sound a little bit different because you have a freedom, right? We get to speak, we get to vote, we get to be a part of who's actually our governing authorities. But here's my point. God does not give you the freedom to bad mouth the government. He is the one who put them there, whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or whether we agree with it. It doesn't mean that you can't use your voice and your vote. You should. You are blessed to live in this country. Use it, please. But when somebody goes into the authority that you do not approve of, there is no need to be bad mouthing them. Submit to the governing authorities. John Bevere, he um, explains that one of the reasons we find submission so difficult is because we live in a democratic society. The kingdom of God is not democratic. It's a kingdom with a king, and he has the say. <laughs> the only and the final say is his. He, he tells us to do something, we do it. That's kind of how it works. Remember, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're not a citizen of this world anymore. You're a citizen of heaven. And because of that, we need to make a paradigm shift. We cannot look at our relationship with heaven the same way that we look at our relationship with the world around us. It's not the same. Okay, next, natural authorities. This is people like your boss, your manager, your coach, your teacher, okay? These, these people in your life. First Peter 2.18 reads like this, talking to servants. Be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. I know some of you have the worst teachers on earth. They are so grumpy that you think to yourself, how could these people possibly be getting paid enough to want to stay in this job that they think that, that it seems that they hate? I get it, I get it. Some of you work in terrible work environments where you almost feel as if you're being abused. Um, I get that. And this is not saying to stay in a situation 
where you are not valued or you're being taken advantage of. It doesn't say when you have a job, you should stay in that job for the rest of your life. That is not what the Word of God says, okay? However, if you are there, are there ways where being respectful and exceeding expectations without complaining would actually increase your likelihood of success? I know in my, even in my own position as an independent contractor for most of my life, I wanted to tell my manager exactly what I was thinking. You know what I mean by that, right? I want to tell her exactly what I was thinking. Um, but being a person of submission means you choose when to talk and you choose when not to. Craig Rochelle says it this way, telling the truth means what you say is true. It doesn't mean that everything that's true needs to be said. Sometimes it is better to hold your tongue. Listen, you cannot be rebellious to your boss, your coach, your teacher, and submitted to God at the same time. It's not possible. And I know that that's hard and frustrating, and probably makes a couple of you want to walk out of here right now, but it's the truth. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us with that type of self-control. All right, how about church authorities? Hebrews 13, seven reads like this. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be no benefit to you. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> We all have a lot of opinions about every area of the church, from what size should the trash can be to uh, who should be leading a ministry, um, to what time should we have a meeting, uh, to where should the money be spent. But the Bible is very clear here, guys. Be confident in the authority that God has put as the leader of this church and submit to him or her. When we are lacking submission, we become a burden to our leaders. This is referring to your ministry leader, it's referring to your spiritual mom or dad, it's referring to your mentor, it's referring to your pastor. Have you ever thought about that? A pastor doesn't burn out because he's doing too many weddings, funerals, and message preparation. He burns out because of our lack of submission to him. And that can be in attitude as well as in action. And let's be honest, most of the time it's an attitude. Every now and then we'll see the other way around also. But, but seriously, if you don't get behind what your leader is doing, you are coming out from submission to God because this is what he says. It's our responsibility to come under the mission of the pastor. Think of it that way, submission. So the mission of the pastor is what we come under. So yes, I've been here for about 20 years. Early on, um, I got really excited because the women had like such a great hunger. They wanted to be in God's word and be together. I'm like, this is awesome. I, I prayed about it. Um, I thought, you know what, let's start a women's Bible study. Um, 
I, I picked the study that we were going to do, and I went to our lead pastor at the time, and I said, I, I just have this amazing idea. Our women are so hungry. Do you, are you okay if we actually get together in my house and when we do a Bible study? And he said no. I was angry. <laughs> and I was confused. I, really. Um, but I made a choice. I hope any of you that have known me for that, that long can confirm this. Um, well, first of all, I made a choice to ask him. Let's start with that. There are many who have a great idea, because mine was a great idea, <laughs> and they just do it, right? Especially, I'm going to do it in my house. What's the difference? Why does, why does the pastor have to approve that? Okay? So I made a choice to ask him. Didn't think the answer would be no, but it was, okay? And at that point, I made another choice. And that choice was to not go around and tell the women, our pastor doesn't get us, our pastor doesn't like us, our pastor is not interested in letting us get together and be in God's word and fellowship, and he doesn't understand that we need relationship. I did not do any of that because I decided in that moment that even though I don't understand why he would say no, he has to have a reason. He was put here as my leader. This is not Pastor John. He was put here as my leader. And so there has to be a reason, and I don't have to know what it is. And that's what we did. We didn't do it <laughs> until later. And at which point he gave us the, the go-ahead and it has been wonderful since then. Do you know that I think if I would have gone out from under his submission, the women's ministries and the influence that I have been able to have here would not, would not have been. I'm positive of it. Okay, so guess what? I don't always do it right. There are many, many, many conversations with Pastor John because um, now I get to serve him uh, as his assistant, uh, where we don't agree on something, okay? And most of the time, my attitude is pretty good. Here's my opinion, Pastor John. But in the end of the day, it's up to you. You tell me what we're doing, and I'm in. <laughs> and I really mean it, okay? But every now and then... <laughs> My desire to be right and to be heard gets the best of me, and I push back with an attitude. Okay? It's, it's an attitude. I don't go against what he says. I don't say tough, I'm doing my own thing. But I have an attitude. I'm going to admit it. Doesn't happen a lot. Fortunately for both of us, the Holy Spirit usually convicts me pretty quickly, um, at which point I have a choice. Ask God for forgiveness and call it a day. Or call Pastor John and ask him for forgiveness. The reason why I do the latter is because I refuse to take the chance of coming out from under his authority. I need to be submissive to him, even when I don't agree. I have to do it for the sake of him, because otherwise I become a burden to him, for the sake of the church, because when the body is lacking submission, the whole body can feel it. And for the sake of myself, I do not want to be in rebellion, even in my attitude. Nobody else will know. But if I do that, I lose the blessing and the favor of God in my life. God never blesses rebellion. How about family authorities? <laughs> <Ugh>. Yeah. 
All right, here we go. Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. I mean, listen, ladies, you could possibly buy the other ones, right? <laughs> this one, this one is the hard one. Um, it feels so outdated. It feels so old school. It sounds like it is impossible to follow in today's society. But I'm gonna say that's not true because God's word is not dated. It's, it's forever and ever. So look, wives, you have the, the right to express your opinion, to present your points, to suggest direction. That's, that's not lack of submission. However, when you are not on the same page and you are not seeing eye to eye, you've talked it out, you've done your thing, and you are just not seeing eye to eye, what are your choices? I mean, you could argue, <laughs> continue to scream and yell at each other, and bring up points that have absolutely nothing to do with what you're actually talking about, not to mention the example that you are giving your children. That doesn't benefit anybody. You don't get anywhere. You could do it anyway. It's a lot of strong, independent women in this room watching online. You could do it anyway, but when you do that, what do you do? You undermine his authority. If he doesn't feel respected, you two will be at odds. So yeah, you get your thing, whatever it is, but you're destroying your marriage. Or, you could submit. Give up our right to be right. Marriage is about putting yourself aside for the benefit of your spouse. It's not about who's the boss. It's about mutually loving and respecting each other, which will lead you to submit to him. Now, I didn't do all of the uh, disclaimers and caveats about the other authorities. There are many. Um, but I, I don't think it would be prudent if I ignore them when discussing um, wives submitting to your husbands. Staying in an abusive relationship is not submission. If you are in an abusive relationship, please seek help and get out. We will help you, okay? Um, nor is this referring to putting the will of an earthly authority, like your husband, before the will of Jesus. If he's telling you to submit to something that is morally wrong, seek help, okay? You hear me? All right. Men, don't think you're off the hook for this one. <laughs> the word of God is very clear. You carry a huge responsibility to be to your wife as Christ is to the church. What does that mean? It means you love her well. It means you treasure her always. You forgive her every time and you place her under your protection. And let me just tell you that if you would do your part, it will make it so much easier for her to submit to you. So how does this actually play out? I'll give you a couple of examples in my own life. So say, um, I feel like you know, God is saying to me that we should give towards the um, youth convention, right? 
So I'm going to go to Kevin and I'm, I'm going to say, hey, honey, I, uh, I think we should give towards youth convention. You okay with that? And he's going to say yes or no, right? So if he says yes, I'm going to then ask, well, how much do you think you want to give? If he gives me a number, that's the check I write. If he does not give me a number and he says, well, what were you thinking? I'm going to tell him. Submission is not, oh my God, I can't say anything. I don't want to be it. That's not what it is. We're partners. We're one. We work together. Okay? So I tell him what, I, what I'm thinking, and he goes, great. Go for it. Do it. Okay? Or I say, honey, I think I would like to give towards youth convention. Are you okay with that? And he says, Are you, Maria, you know, we've got five out of the six of us going to youth convention. I really don't think that we have the money to do that. Now, does that mean I heard wrong from God? I don't know the answer. But what I do know is if I give without his okay, I come out from submission. I am no longer under his authority and I am rebelling against God himself. So I am going to come under that and say, if I heard wrong, I heard wrong. If I heard right, he's hearing wrong, but it's on him. It's not on me because I'm under him. Does that make sense? Yes. I know that that's a very unusual way to think. So I just, okay. Um, another example, this is, this is one where I did not do it very well. Um, so this is when Kevin wanted to let the kids start watching movies like the Lord of the Rings movies. Now, just so you know, I expected my children to be watching VeggieTales until they were 16 years old. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I am not a TV or movie person, and, and uh, I wanted to keep them sheltered. Um, so I was not a happy camper about this one, right? And we heatedly discussed it several times. And I expressed my concerns and my frustrations and what I was thinking about it. And in the end of the day, they ended up watching The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, now, I can't say that I submitted perfectly on that one because I have expressed a couple of passive aggressive remarks over the years. <laughs> um, but we are all a work in progress. But part of that was having a discussion, okay? And instead of me pushing and nagging and arguing and fussing about it, I said, God, this is between him and you. We come under him. If you're good with this, great. Well, guess what? My kids are okay. They're not scarred for life. So it actually worked out just fine. Um, and, I, and I have learned, by the way, over the years, um, that God gave me Kevin because he sees things in a different way than I see them. And I'm not always right. Okay? Family authorities, I'm not going to go over this a lot, but family authorities also includes children submitting to your parents. Okay? Children, submit to your parents, even if you do not agree with them. All right. Hard, heavy? It's a lot, right? All right, um, how, about, how about the direct authority? Okay, so now those are the delegated authorities that God has put on earth that we are to submit to. Now our direct authority is God himself, okay? God makes submitting to his authority, I think, a little bit easier than submitting to the delegated authorities. Delegated authorities are human. They're imperfect, they're selfish, they're limited in their perspective, they are not always honest, they do not always keep their promises, and sometimes they're just plain mean. But God is not like that. God knows everything. He always has your best interest in mind. He sees the whole picture. He never, ever lies. He loves every nuance about you. He always keeps his promises. 
He is trustworthy and he is kind. Now, there are the spirit-filled, I love Jesus people who say, I only answer to Jesus. <laughs> the only problem is, Jesus, as your Lord, has said to submit to his delegated authorities. So if you are rebelling against them, you are rebelling against him. God is big. He knows the whole picture. Do you trust him enough to come under his authority? Submission is the utmost form of trust in a relationship. And it denotes total surrender to the Lord for fulfillment of that expectation. The idea here is, do you trust God enough to submit to him? And if you do, then do you trust him enough to submit to those in authority that have not actually earned that trust themselves? So, that's the who we submit to, but I have to tell you a little bit of the why. Why does this matter? You know, God's not just like, oh, this will be fun. Let's see how they handle this one. You know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like that. Um, the principle of authority and submission is given to us as our protection and our provision. It is our protection and our provision. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Yeah. So, for example, Hold on one second. So, for example, If I take this umbrella, okay, um, and I walk around like this, you all are going to say she's lost her mind, <laughs> right? If I go out in the weather like this, I'm going to get plummeted by hail and hit by the rain and, and scorched by the sun, correct? Okay. Now, say that this umbrella represents God's authority, okay? I live with a worldview that says true freedom is found from getting out from under authority. Everything I'm meant to be, everything, all the ideas that I have, um, in order for me to be the best me, I need to stay out from the oppression that is keeping me tied down. However, when I do that, it's like walking around like this. I have no protection. So if we look at this as God's authority and I get under it, now I'm protected. I'm protected from the things that I cannot see because God is big and he sees things that we don't see. I'm protected from temptations. There's a lot of temptations out there, guys. Gambling, porn, taking a second look at your, the other lady, even though you're married, lying, cheating on your taxes. It's a lot of temptations out there. And when you come under his authority, he can and will protect you. You know, you want spiritual authority over the devil's lies, correct? We talk about that. This church has talked about that over and over again. We want to stomp on the devil's head, correct? 
Well, guess what? You have to submit to God in order to have that spiritual authority. James 4, 7 says this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Anybody hear that voice, uh, that verse before? Do you know how it starts? Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You take this and you put yourself under it. Now you have his authority in order to be able to resist the devil. Spiritual authority is directly correlated to your submission. I don't know if you've heard that before. Spiritual authority is directly correlated to your submission, to God himself and to those he has put as authorities in your life. So is there an area of your life that you just can't kick? I would ask yourself, is there an area of my life that I am refusing to submit to authority? I know we think like, but I have so much to offer. You know, if I, if I, um, if I never rise up to be the woman that I'm supposed to be, no one will ever see what I have to offer. I'll never be able to reach my fullest potential this way. Let me tell you something. Submission, coming under, is actually your pathway to influence. To your success. He uses the authority in your life to prepare you for more authority. Nobody likes the practice round, but that's the preparation place. Levi Lesko said it this way, God sees if you are worthy of authority by putting you under unworthy authority. That's the preparation. You see, in the kingdom, you can only have authority to the level with which you are willing to submit. And guess what happens when you submit yourself? You stay protected, provided for, and now you can bring someone else along for the ride. You get to be an instrument of influence to someone else. So just so that I can continue the illustration, Estella, come on up here real quickly. So now let's say I'm staying in submission and now Estella is coming under my authority. I don't know, a women's ministries coordinator, yes. something, okay, anything, right? So Here's now, that. guess what happens? Can you hold that? Now, we are actually increasing the authority around us. Do you see that? Chelsea, come on down real quickly. Now, we come, right, and Chelsea comes along in here with us. She's willing to submit to my crazy women's ministry authority as well. And look what's happening. Together, we're increasing the authority we have. And we're not doing it because we said, no, I'm independent. I want to run for my life. That's not how we did it. We did it by coming together and coming under the authority of God and coming under the authorities that are above. Does this make sense, what I am saying? Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Here. It's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> thank you. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, didn't hit me. <laughs> Sometimes we feel that this S word is actually to hold us back. It's not. It's actually to give you freedom. We live, like we, we think of this as a bad word. That's not true. We live in a bad world, okay? 
Philippians 2.14, do everything without grumbling or arguing. This is the attitude, right? The attitude of the heart. So that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. We live in a warped and crooked generation. I have to tell you that, that we have twisted this beautiful principle of submission that God has given us to be our protection, to be our provision, where we can find freedom. You know, we were singing about freedom this morning. Freedom is not found in, I can do whatever I want whenever I want. That is not true freedom. That's floundering. Freedom is found under the protection of our Heavenly Father. So friends, submission is not a loss. You're not giving up your will, you're not giving up your independence, you're not giving up your desires. Instead, they're being surrendered. Surrendered under, under the protection of your Father who is bigger and better than anything that we could ever understand. True freedom, True peace is found under the protection of submission, of the S word. So if you are feeling like you're out in the weather with no protection and you'd be willing to grab an umbrella I would say just stand up. It could be a civil authority, a natural authority, a family authority, a church authority, or to God himself. Just be willing to stand and say, yeah, I, I've got an attitude about this. I kind of do my own thing. I don't want to stay quiet when I don't agree with something that's going on around me. But I need you to understand that any area of rebellion is sin. And sin can be forgiven when we come under God's authority. We admit that we can't do it ourselves. And the first step is always putting your faith in Jesus. And when we do that, he becomes our model. He becomes our Lord and our Savior. And it's not just Savior, it's Lord. That's the difference. If he is truly your Lord, you will submit to him and you will submit to the authorities that he's put in your life. Um, we're going to take a few minutes of just, just being quiet. Um, I would encourage you to take inventory of your own attitudes, the choices that you make, and make a decision if it's time to surrender. And if it is, I would ask that you stand because that is your first step. Desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I surrender. I Oh, 
Father, to come under submission. Open our hearts, God, that we would be able to see those areas where we are in rebellion, where we are in rebellion to you, where we are in rebellion to the authorities that you've put in our life. Teach us, Father, teach us to see this principle as a beautiful protection that you have given us. Lord, we pray that you would allow us allow us father the privilege of walking under your authority forgive us god for our sin forgive us father for those areas where we have had attitude issues where we've done things our own way where we've done things without permission lord forgive us we are making a choice, God, to come in alignment with you. And Father, we have a great expectation, Lord, that you will show up, that you will bring protection where I think it would never come from, provision, Father, that comes literally from the sky. Lord God, that you would show up and that you would even make change in the difficult circumstances that we're faced in. But God, until you do, we are choosing to submit. Thank you that you are a trustworthy Father. Help our unbelief right now, Father. We trust that you know better and that you have put these people in our lives for a reason. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand across this room. Stand across this room. This front space will be open. If you need somebody to talk with, to pray with, as others are heading out these doors and we do want to remind you, of course, you'll head out the doors to my right to pick up children from super kids. And now I pray as you go that your, that my, that our attitude would be like that of Christ Jesus. Who, though being in the very nature, God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. I pray that today, if you need somebody to talk to and find out more about what that means for you, that as others are heading out, you would come. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. And once again, to our moms, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you.